Okay, hot take. QAnon is a Discordian chaos operation intended to make racists show their ass in public again while slowly exposing the working class to radical left-wing ideology. I present to you Exhibit A. Ah, power to the people. Because the boss, the boss's right to live is mine to die. So I'm going out heavy, sort of like Mount Tai, with five centuries of pen, uh, pe uh, penitentiary. Year of the Boomerang is the first single off Rage Against the Machine's sophomore album, Evil Empire, and was featured on the soundtrack to John Singleton's 1995 drama, Higher Learning. The film portrays a diverse group of characters attending the fictional Columbus University and the potent racial and sexual tensions that come with modern campus life, featuring Lawrence Fishburne as a Thomas Sowell-esque conservative Conservative black, conservative black, conservative, conservative black, conservative black, oh fuck. I literally can't even say those three words in a row. The identity politics denier and bootstrap theory proponent comes to realize the error of his ways after witnessing a mass shooting at the hands of a lonely young man who gets stoked to violence by local neo-Nazis. Let me repeat this. In 1995, a movie was released in theaters nationwide that depicted an involuntary celibate white guy falling into isolation finding white supremacy, and going on a school shooting spree. All right, I think we've made this video appropriately advertiser-friendly. In 2019, the lyrics to Year of the Boomerang were recited in full to viewers of Real Truth, a QAnon circle jerk that actively tests the intelligence level and attention span of its audience for fun and profit. So let's see if we can help out the handful of people that fell into their trap and for whatever reason decided to do some actual research on the source material before parroting aggressive misrepresentations of the black and indigenous American experience because reading this short paragraph on Wikipedia is apparently too hard. First of all, America has always been a far-right country. In contrast, modern Germany is considered a center-right country with a strong Christian conservative base and offers free secondary education and healthcare to all of its citizens. Want to know why they do that? Because they believe, get this, that the Bible tells them to take care of all of the inhabitants of the earth, no matter what they're able to offer society in return. Do we have like a different version here? Okay, um, I'm actually being told that we do in fact have a different version over here. Actually a bunch of different versions. What kind of weird ass religion is this where you can just make up your own translation? Who's in charge here? Anyway, the point is that both Republicans and Democrats represent two wings of far right governance. The American Democratic Party is center right at best. The only difference between these two groups is who and what they decide to agree with in public. They both serve the same singular goal, which is to funnel money to corporations through the military and prison industrial complexes, and whatever else they can get money out of, like pharmaceuticals and student loans. You hike the price to pay for R&D, but you haven't made the drug any better even as you doubled the cost. We can agree that there are no government officials standing up on behalf of the people. That said, there's no such thing as a rogue billionaire. To be wealthy in America is to engage in corruption and to profit off the abuse of the working class. If I'm wrong, show me the thousands of working class people Donald Trump has actually improved the material conditions of in his lifetime. And feel free to replace Trump with Musk or Buffett or George fucking Soros. I don't care. They're all the same. But uh, Mr. Soros, if you're watching, uh, the link to our cash app is in the description. 07 team leader. <laughs> the only difference between Trump and the billionaires you hate is ethnicity. I don't know if you just don't see that or don't care, but that's weird. The solution is not to simply remove those in power, but to eliminate the concepts of power and centralized resources completely. <laughs> Once again, please listen closely. <laughs> the sisters are in so check the front line. Got it? Now, here's what QAnon hears. The sisters are so in check in the front line. Dude got so excited he just rearranged the words. Such facts, much logic. Do you see how the connotation of women being in, referring to their equal involvement and, uh-oh, here it comes, consent is very, very different from the connotation of women being in check? They say I just talk to other leftists in these videos, so I'm really trying my best here, people. <laughs> Lead vocalist Zacharias Manuel de la Rocha was born in Long Beach, California on January 12, 1970, 
His adolescence would directly coincide with the rise of Ronald Reagan, the neoliberal asshat who catered to the rich and actively put more people on the street than any other president in history, the Haitian uprising against CIA-backed authoritarian ruler Jean-Claude Duvalier began in 1983 when Pope John Paul II visited the struggling island, calling on the nation's wealthy to engage in, quote, more equitable distribution of income, a more egalitarian social structure, and an increased popular participation in public life. Duvalier would be deposed in 1986, exiled to France via U.S. Air Force escort. The fight for Haitian independence continues to this day. And look what's in that post. So you've got the Haiti yeah. state of mind. Yeah, yeah. You've got electroshock mind control that, yeah. you know, we talk about. Wait, hold on. W what did he say? And look what's in that post. All right. This man has never listened to this song. He's literally regurgitating a random Facebook post that told him this song has QAnon connotations. Which just makes me so happy. <laughs> The U.S. education system has been used by the establishment for well over a century to negate the culture and history of black, indigenous, and queer people worldwide. As a person of Mexican, African, Jewish, German, and Irish descent, and the son of Chicano street art pioneer Beto, Zach's ancestors are well versed in the many forms of anti-imperialist action against the imposing First World. The U.S. education system has also been the target of many right-wing religious movements that seek to demonize any and all knowledge that does not reinforce their selfish, xenophobic conservatism. It seems plain to me that a truly curious intellect with any sense of emotional resilience would compassionately expose themselves to and entertain potentially objectionable ideas with the goal of understanding them. I've learned so much about debate techniques, the tenets of capitalism, conservatism, and the free market over the past few years. I have a shelf of books I don't agree with that I did not pay for. <laughs> what I've learned from this good faith exploration is that regardless of political stance, we are all being coaxed into a quietly oppressive culture where everyone acts very calm and rational all the time, as we are all encouraged to endlessly consider each other's perspective instead of discussing the actual ideas that might transform our culture. Listen, you can love Bernie, volunteer at the food bank, and still express deeply ignorant, reactionary views when asked to think outside of your very narrow comfort zone. And I haven't heard really anybody else in the party, whatever party we're, we're talking about. Uh... Hey, uh, have I ever told you that Jordan Peterson is a white supremacist? Jordan Peterson is a white supremacist. Hitler was obsessed with order and cleanliness. Mm. He was a very orderly person. He was very sensitive to disgust. That's what it looks mm. like. And if you're disgusted by something, then you want to eradicate it. Increase the levels of hygiene in the factories to get rid of the rats and the mice, to plant flowers out front, you know, to make everything look neat and orderly. And the insecticide they used was Zyklon. It's like the different formulation was the gas that was used in the concentration camps. And so Hitler went from cleaning up the rats and the mice in the factories and the insects, and then he went into the mental hospitals and started cleaning up in there, and then... It's not a debate. <laughs> Somehow they decided that this line is about Obama's birth certificate. You know, when you talk about um, birthright in that in that uh, song, it's coming back around about Obama's citizenship. Like we're still doing that? I swear to God, these people were trained by Matt Besser himself. She just yes anded that shit into another dimension. This is the embodiment of don't think. A true master at work. The doctrines of the right Zach is alluding to are that of capitalism and the fantastical birthright of prosperity we all supposedly have access to as American-born citizens. Regardless of race or class, the majority of people that seek this birthright find that it comes with a lifetime of activities that don't really seem to fulfill much more than the fleeting whims of generational wealth holders. Capitalism will never allow more than a small percentage of the population to retain and control wealth. Change my mind. So I grip a cannon, fanon, and pass the shells to my classmates. How are they so confident? Like, how could you be confident with this demonstration of reasoning and basic comprehension? I'm calling bullshit. If you're not fucking with us, someone is definitely fucking with you. Check out our last video, No Name's Revolutionary Message, for more on Franz Fanon, the pan-African anarchist philosopher and author of the extremely influential work, The Wretched of the Earth. To grip the cannon like Fanon, so I grip a cannon, Fanon, is to take up arms with the entirety of the working class, which includes the dreaded left, against the capitalist hegemony that seeks to categorize humanity by our quality of work like the fucking Hunger Games. More power to the people. 
Here, Morello's signature 1982 Telecaster makes a rare appearance sans effects, invoking a brooding calm before the storm, allowing his accomplice to lock and load a devastating pre-chorus. Channeling Public Enemy, the Black Panther slogan triggers a beat drop, and Zack returns to his revolutionary tirade. Although challenging to make out on record, We've got old faceless QAnon douche to help us out with this unparalleled interpretation. Ah, power to the people. Because the boss, the boss's right to live is mine to die. Oh man, that's gold. Not only is the exploitation of the working class incentivized under capitalism, the crabs in a barrel culture make sure that we are thoroughly beaten into submission before receiving any sense of approval. Overseas, these words take on a more literal meaning as major U.S. corporations continue to aggressively abuse human rights for profits. This ancient Chinese cone is attributed to influential historian and astrologer Sima Qian, famously quoted by Chairman Mao in his 1944 speech entitled, Service to the People. Some 30 years later, after many stints as a political prisoner, Huey Newton would find similar inspiration in these words with his theory of revolutionary suicide. five centuries of peni uh, pe uh, penitentiary, so let the guilty hang in the year of the boomerang. Okay, he knows what he's saying at this point. Come on. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, I, I don't want to play the rest of this audio. The host suggests that what, quote, the left is projecting onto, quote, this president, this is from 2019, is, quote, literally coming back around at them. Why are all the dogs in the neighborhood barking all of a sudden? There is only one verse to this song. Of course, the chorus is conveniently left out of this impromptu poetry slam. How many of these mindless parrots identify with being someone else's property, you think? Is that what Biden and the Democrats are trying to do to you by making you consider the needs of disabled people before your own when you go to the grocery store? Oh, 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 you, you do actually think that. And who's the snowflake? Without warning, the track quickly flips into a hardcore breakdown and single-handedly births at the drive-in. Thanks for watching. I legitimately did not know this song was co-opted by QAnon when I first decided to write about it. Synchronicity snowballs on you, I'm telling you. We're really excited for you to see the next few videos, so stay tuned. In the meantime, check out our other stuff our talk show, and of course don't forget Lo-Fi for Leftists, a new series featuring fresh beats from yours truly, casually mixed with wise words from some of the greatest thinkers of our time. Come kick it with us. Good night and good luck.